young one right now. So we're going to get it in front of the camera and you can kind of see the body length and depth. But, you know, the body length is greater than the depth in this one. So it's good health because you see the length here and the depth there. But it's a good shape. This one is not obese. And now see, it's a very friendly animal. It really likes hand, being handled. But you can see, it's a very friendly frog. And I'm, I let it move around, but I'm going to put it back in its tank now. And the tank, what do I put in there? Well, I got this frog in some topsoil. But, you know, I wanted to show... I wanted to show the length and depth because this is important. What you feed that frog is going to determine how long it lives. Like, first of all, many people in the YouTube community, I know this is something a lot of you do, feeding rodents to cold-blooded animals can actually contribute to obesity. And this can contribute to early mortality and lots of health problems and it makes the frog less healthy. And so, honestly, with the frog, you know, I got... Right now, I'm putting it in a bin like this with just a little bit of water. I let it move around a lot. I don't want it burrowing. I want it to get exercise, and I want it to get its hunting instincts. So I throw crickets in. You know, you give some dusted crickets. Earthworms are really good. You know, now mealworms and goldfish and mice are high in fat. So you want to look at these frogs. Now, I do not want a frog with its, you know, head almost barely showing, and it's like shoulders, like, covering its head. I mean, you see some of these frogs that are so obese and taking up so much space, they're going to die young, and they're probably not feeling good. And so they're stressed out, and they're eating even more. And so in my tank, now I got a Sterilite container, and I put like four inches of topsoil in there, and I threw in a bunch of seeds, and I just grew a bunch of plants in it. You know, I keep it in a, I got shade-loving plants, but, you know, I put it in there, and it dug in and disappeared without a trace for like a week. And I had to dig in there to find it. And it was still alive, burrowed in there. So it was a perfect tank. It actually enjoyed itself there. It like disappeared in my tank. So, you know, I had to take it out because I wanted to let the plants grow. And I didn't want it to destroy, you know, dig things up. So right now I'm trying to feed it and get its hunting instincts. So it's better to give them a variety of small crickets and bugs because that way they move around more to eat it. If you are giving one mouse, it has a lot of fat that will fatten up the frog but you want to dust them with vitamin d13 and the calcium and they get the phosphorus for the bones too from the proteins and the tissues in the animals but this is where you know the nutrition for the frogs do not like feed them overly dangerous food like mice are cruel to the frog and the frog is cruel to the mouse and it's cruel both ways because it's not a natural diet and they contribute to an obesity so they can't move around in the tank very easily and you know frogs need a certain amount of fat but they can get very fat because they also don't move around that much unless they see prey they sit down till they see prey and then they move because they're kind of prehistoric and they have that instinct. So I make a tank with a lot of hiding spaces for them and places where they can blend in. And like the topsoil and the plants in my other tank. And I'll show that. I'll keep you posted on the tank and the frog as it grows. But we're trying to make a natural environment. You know, you have like a, if you had grass seed and topsoil, like two bucks worth of substrate in a sterilite bin, you could actually do better than a hundred dollar tank at PetSmart just because you're making a native environment and they dig in that soil burrow in there they feel at home like this pixie frog honestly was sleeping under the water bowl in the pet store second I put in my tank it disappears without a trace so I was wondering if it was still alive and I had to dig six days later and it was perfectly healthy under the soil and it was like the tank of a lifetime it just loved its tank it just moved around in there and disappeared and I made another toe tank, and I got it some hostas, and, you know, I basically got some topsoil, put it in there, and, you know, I got some hostas and shade-loving indoor plants, you know, like shade plants. Or you can put a fern in the toe tank, because it doesn't need much light at all. And then, you know, that way you have places for them to hide, and it kind of retains moisture in the soil, too, so they can burrow. And toads love to burrow. And you know what? If you put insects and plants in the tank, they can easily reproduce in there and then have a more native environment, too. But, you know, I let them roam around in there. And I'll show you a video of it. But, like with this pixie frog. Oh, 
I'm gonna get you out. This is a nice frog, very friendly. But you see, you know this, this is not a fat frog. Like this frog is reasonably proportioned. And see, let's see if it jumps on the keyboard. It might press a key. I'll put you in the camera, see what he wants. Is he hungry? It looks like a toad, but it's it's still its length and width are pretty similar. And yep, it's friendly, but it's very active. You know, this guy will burrow into the soil, and it really liked its tank. It was interesting because it got darker in the soil, and then you know, that, like it's now sitting in my hand, and it's really a friendly frog. Like I don't know, this one wouldn't bite if your life depended on it. But, you know, this one, I'm trying to feed it, you know, a variety of food to get its hunting instinct. I don't want to just give it, you know, very fatty, economical stuff. And I don't think I could bring this one to, to eat a mouse because I would be concerned about the mouse injuring this frog. But you know this, like, you know, this frog is very healthy. And this is the kind of shape you want the frog to have because see, you know, the width of the back and then the spine goes down there. You know, you see where the hips, I'll let you move. Yeah, I'll let you crawl around if you want to go back in the tank. And the legs, but you see how it can use its muscles well and it can move. And it has the right amount, you know, the right growth. Because I'm going to feed this, I'm going to start dusting high protein sources because I want to give it strong growth so it can move around and live a long time and see you know, this is a very tame frog. And see, it's trusting right now. It's a cold-blooded animal. It gets my warmth. It's not really, you know, scared right now. It's pretty calm. And now when I'm going to put him back in the tank and probably wash him off. But basically, you want to make sure they're growing healthy. And like dusting crickets is a good basis. For a small animal now when it gets bigger i'm probably going to give it rosy reds but i'm going to put the rosy reds probably like yeah i have this plan my parents think this is nuts to have a frog like what are you going to do a vacation i have a plan i'm just going to take the tank and i'm going to turn it an angle with a brick and i'm going to flood one side and put a bunch of fish in there and he'll go eat the fish and as the water recedes you know it gets drier he'll burrow so he'll always have some moisture but i'm not going to have like I'll have some water and I might have like a sponge in there too, but you know, this is where like if you have a reasonable amount of water and flood the tank and the frog will hang around in the water and they'll be saturated for days. And if you can get this going without much maintenance before, you'll be good. Like now this gets to the second thing. I did told you not to feed mice to frogs. Now, if you have a huge frog, it's very hungry, and you're going to go away on vacation, that's when mice can be handy, you know, because then they may need all that fat if you want to be sure. But honestly, I would much rather feed worms because worms have more protein. You actually look at the food sources, and worms are very good sources of food, and they're cheaper. You can get a bunch of worms for a cheaper price than one mouse. And, you know, like... Now, I want to do Nubia roaches. They look really good, too, but they are like 30 bucks online just to ship. And there's no telling, you know, if you're going to know how to breed them or anything about them. Because you may pay a lot more money just to have stuff to keep them fed. But, you know, this is where, like, people feed a lot of these basically nutrient-enriched diets to the crickets to give the nutrients for the frogs into the crickets. And some pet shops will put this in there so you know that's one thing that you can feed dusted or nutrient fed crickets and probably get better results and you know honestly i'm probably going to try and give this frog like i feed it when it wants to eat i put several crickets in if they disappear i'm going to leave it alone for a day and then i'll come back the next day and give it a worm or two mealworms like one earthworm four crickets or 10 large i mean 10 small ones for a frog that size is the appropriate diet because it'll eat them all, but that way it'll till 
be moving around looking for stuff. And then you can feed it a mealworm next. And then you can feed a worm. But you can have a variety of different things you feed it. And you don't just give it one thing. You basically mix it up. And this is where I prefer to feed it fish and worms. That's probably what I'm going to feed it constantly. As it gets older, I was about to say, I was hoping it wasn't jumping around anymore. It's, it's a nice frog. But as it gets older, I'm probably going to feed it fish and worms. Like fish are what I'm going to try and get it to eat. Because like not feed, not the goldfish, because they can have parasites and a lot of fat. But the rosy reds are actually really good to feed. So I'm going to try and get it to eat a rosy red at some point, And it will. You know, that's one thing. You know, rosy reds really grow your frogs because they get they have the bones and calcium and phosphorus in those bones. And they have vitamin D13 better because they have solid bones. And the exoskeletons are chitin, which has some calcium, but not as much. And so this is where you really want to look at the spectrum, what you're feeding your frogs, and then you look at the growth you get. And so, you know, I hope this video helps people raising amphibians or frogs or reptiles. And thanks for watching.